Hi everyone and welcome to a video on transmission wind-up. Here we're going to be covering some questions such as what is transmission wind-up, how is it caused, what vehicles get wind-up, how do you know when you've got wind-up, myths and truths about wind-up and how do you fix it. So transmission wind-up is pretty simply defined. It is basically the driveline stress caused by the front axle trying to rotate quicker than the rear axle when you go around a corner and not be able to. And we're going to explain what that means in the rest of this video. So why is wind-up a problem? Well, simply it has a really negative effect to the point where it's dangerous on your vehicle's handling and ultimately it can actually break your transmission. Now before we get into exactly what wind-up is, let's go over some driveline basics. The red marks on the wheels show that the front and rear wheels are rotating at the same speed as the car goes in a straight line. On this Lego model we've got differentials and we've got a blue tick mark on the front and the rear prop shaft. And you'll see that as the model drives in a straight line then all four wheels turn at the same speed but also the front prop shaft or drive shaft turns at exactly the same speed as the rear as evidenced by the position of the blue mark. Any time a vehicle turns a corner, the front axle has to travel further than the rear axle. And you can see here this circle represents the path the front right wheel takes around the corner, and that one represents the front left wheel. And these two represent the rear wheels. And you can see on average the circles for the front wheels are larger than the circles for the rear wheels. Therefore, going around the corner, the front wheels have to rotate quicker because they travel further than the rear wheels. And that is at the heart of understanding wind-up. Now we're going to get the model to turn a corner. The two blue marks indicate that the drive shafts are lined up at the moment, but as the vehicle turns a corner, you'll see that um, just now the rear prop shaft completes a turn, but the front drive shaft has already completed a turn, so the front drive shaft is turning quicker than the rear drive shaft. Same effect in real life, the red mark started at the same point, but as the vehicle turns a corner, the front wheels are turning quicker than the rear wheels, as you can see from the position of the red marks. Now we're going to turn right and left, we're going to start off with the blue marks lined up, and then as the vehicle moves to the right, of course the front prop shaft, the drive shaft is going to turn quicker than the rear, but as we start to turn left, exactly the same thing happens still turns in the same direction, still turns quicker. Now we're going to take a look at what happens underneath a real rear vehicle. So you can see there that we're going in a straight line, both feel the same sort of speed. Now we're turning left and the left wheel slows down, the right wheel slows up. That prop shaft, however, you can see with the red um, mark, it's still going around in the same direction, regardless of whether we're turning left or turning right. Now we're going to introduce a concept of a locking centre differential, which allows the front axle to either be fixed to the rear axle or turn independently, depending on whether it's locked or unlocked. This is really important for off-roading and whether the vehicle is turning a corner or not. Now we're going to put our vehicle into four-wheel drive and try that turn again. Okay, we're going to start off with the red marks um, at the same point top of the wheels. Now as you can see the vehicle is turning but take a look at the back wheel you can see it's skidding and you can also see that it's actually starting to kick up a bit of a rut and disturb the gravel surface there and that is because it's in full drive front and rear drive shafts are locked to the same speed yet the vehicle is turning and that is slip. Now back to the model and we've locked the centre diff and we're just going to turn only through 90 degrees and that's going to be enough to get wind up. So there's going to be stress bound up in the transmission. So watch what happens when I lift the vehicle off from the ground. Take a look at the four wheels and you'll see that stress relief and that is wind up. 
Now we're going to do exactly the same turn again, except this time the centre diff is open, allowing the front and rear axles to turn at different speeds yet still be driven. Now if I pick the vehicle up again, you'll see that the wheels don't move, there's no stress and there's no wind up because of the open centre diff. So we've started off with the model again, lock centre diff, turn through 90 degrees or so. Now we know at this point that there would be wind up, but what we're going to do is reverse straight back. What that does, that undoes the wind up, and we can prove this by picking up the model and we should see that the wheels don't move when we pick it up. And sure enough, no movement of the wheels, there's no wind up, we've cancelled it out. OK, now for something a bit less intuitive. I'm going to turn the model with the lock centre diff through 90 degrees again, and we know at this point we'd get wind up. And we also know that we can reverse back and get rid of it. But we're going to reverse back in the opposite direction, and that will actually cancel it out. Why? Because it doesn't matter whether the front wheels are turned left or right, they will still wind up or alternatively get rid of wind up depending on which way you're going. So we've done that, we've 90 degrees one way, 90 the other way, pick it up, and the wind up has been cancelled out. Now this demonstrates play. All mechanical systems have got a little bit of slack, a little bit of play, so you can see like that. And it's that taking up of the slack, which is really what wind-up is all about, causing stress. So wind-up is caused by three things being true. One is that you must be on a high traction surface, such as bitumen, be that dry or wet. Two, the vehicle must be in a situation or in a mode where it is forcing its front axle to turn at the same speed as the rear axle. And the two examples of that is a part-time four-wheel drive, um, in four-wheel drive, or a constant four-wheel drive vehicle with a manually lockable centre diff which has got its centre diff locked. And the third thing is that you must be turning a corner. So let's go through some examples. Here's a Ford Ranger. It's a part-time four-wheel drive vehicle and it's in four-wheel drive. So here's our three criteria. Is it a high traction surface? No, it's a dirt road. Are the front and rear drive shafts locked in? Yes, they are. It's part-time four-wheel drive in four-wheel drive. Is it turning a corner? Yes. Do we have wind-up? No, we don't because only one of the three is true. We need all three to be true for wind-up to occur. So here's that Ranger again. Still in four-wheel drive. And is it on a high traction surface? Yes. Are the front and rear drive shafts the same speed? Yes. Are we turning a corner? Yes. All three are true, therefore we will get wind up. Another example, Jeep JL Wrangler. That's in the 4H um, part-time mode as opposed to the auto mode. So here we have the three criteria again. High traction surface? No, it's a beach. Front and rear drive shaft same speed? Yes. Turning a corner? No. Do we have wind up? No. Wouldn't even have wind up if we turned a corner because it's a low traction surface. So Land Rover Discovery 5, aka L462, uh, that, are we on a high traction surface? No we're not. Front and rear drive shafts locked to the same speed? Uh, no they are not, and that's got a computer controlled centre coupling so it cannot be locked front and rear unless the computer decides and it won't keep it locked. Are we turning a corner? Yes, so no wind up. The reason you don't get wind up on dirt roads is because not only is the surface loose, there's lots of bumps. Both of them combine to mean that the wheels can slip effectively enough so that the wind up tension is not built up on your average dirt road. Now wind up only affects four wheel drives with part time four wheel drive transmissions um, or with manually lockable centre diffs. So examples here. All these vehicles could get wind up because they're either part time four wheel drive like the Ranger and the MUX or they're constant four wheel drive with manually lockable sensitives like the Discovery and the Land Cruiser 200 series. Now these vehicles are all constant four wheel drive but none of them have got manually lockable centre diffs and all are computer controlled so none of them will get wind up. So how do you know when you've got wind up? Well there's four things. One, um, you get understeer which is when the vehicle tries to drive on straight ahead and you just need more and more steering lock in order to turn. Two, you get tyre squeal, that's the tyres protesting and screaming because they're being forced to turn at speeds they don't want to be fighting with the transmission. And then finally there's vibration. Now the fourth and most important thing is it gets worse and worse. When you turn left, when you turn right, that wind up builds up over time to the point where it's likely to actually explode your transmission. So some myths and truths about wind up. One, going straight always reduces wind up. That's not true. 
If it is a low traction surface like a loose dirt road, yes, you'll get rid of wind up that way. But if it's a high traction surface, you won't. And in fact, in wind up, in some situations, you can actually increase your wind up, let's say if you had smaller diameter tyres on the front uh, than the rear. Whatever wind up you've got when you're going in a straight line, be that forwards or backwards, is the same that you're going to remain with because you're not changing the relative speed of the front and rear drive shafts. Turning left and right cancels that wind up, definitely not true. Whenever you turn left or right, you are still forcing that front drive shaft to turn quicker than the rear, so you will increase the amount of wind up that you have. Reversing straight back cancels wind up, kind of true. Sometimes if you do have a little bit of wind up, going straight back or forward, especially in a circle, can actually allow you to shift that selector from four wheel drive to two wheel drive or unlock the center diff. But generally, anything where you're going straight will not have an effect on the wind up. So how do you fix wind up? Well, first thing to try is to take the vehicle out of four-wheel drive or to unlock your centre diff. Now, if the, all the play is taken up in the transmission and the joints, then that's not going to be um, possible. So then you have to try something else, which is reversing in a circle and try again. And that assumes that you've got wind up by driving forwards. You can also drive in a loose surface, but, um, even a straight line, and uh, that should allow the front and rear wheels to turn at different speeds and therefore get rid of the wind up. What we don't recommend doing is jacking a vehicle up because that can uh, come to a sudden release of tension and that can be dangerous. So here's the model turning through 90 degrees or so which will give us some wind up and this time I'm going to do the equivalent of jacking up just one wheel and you'll see all the stress release through one wheel. It will be nice and safe because it's just a model but imagine if that was more wind up on a full scale vehicle. So which of these produces the most wind up A or B? Well the answer is A goes through 720 degrees of turn, B goes through 180. But as we know, the 360 degree one way does not cancel out the 360 degree the other way. So we actually get four times the amount of wind up with A than with B. So a summary of wind up then. To get wind up you need a corner, front and rear drive shafts locked to the same speed and a high traction surface. Wind up is only possible with part-time four-wheel drives or those with manually lockable centre diffs, not with computer-controlled centre couplings. Turning left or right, both increase wind up. And to remove, reverse in a circle or drive on a loose surface. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel for more explanations on four-wheel drives, cars, towing and whatever else I find interesting. 